Welcome to this special edition of the Bear Den News. I'm Zach Jasmine, and joining me today are fellow commentators Ben Sear and Jackson Lawrence, as well as special guest New York Senator David Valeski. First off, Senator, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And we'll start things off with a very serious question for Mr. Sear. Right, I have to ask you, I was doing a little bit of research on you before, and I saw that you went to UConn, and I just had to ask, how could you go to UConn when you come from, you know, Syracuse area? Oh, wow, <laughs> he starts out with the toughest question. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, that is, I did go to the University of Connecticut for graduate school, um, and when it really was a challenge was when I represented Syracuse University, which I continue to do in, in my Senate district, and being a graduate of UConn. When they were both in the Big East, that was a big problem. <laughs> yeah. Big East, big problem. Uh, but uh, I root, root for both schools uh, in basketball, football, and all school sports. So, yeah. Well, Mr. Golaski, you told us early that your college career is so interesting and varied. Uh, how did you make the transition to New York State Senator? Well, you know, I've always had a, an interest in American politics. Uh, when I grew up, um, when I was a boy, my dad was uh, an elected office, he was on the city council. And I've always thought that, that public service is really uh, uh, one of the most noble professions uh, that, that one can consider. So I had that interest from when I was young. I then, to your point about the University of Connecticut, actually uh, got a master's degree in political science, so I studied a lot of American politics. Uh, but I always knew that at, at some point um, I wanted to actually get in, into public service uh, directly. So my first job out of graduate school was actually uh, as a legislative assistant in the New York State Assembly. I spent a few years there, got to learn how the state legislature works. Um, from there I went into the media, as we were talking about off camera uh, at, at WCNY, public TV and radio. But I always knew that I wanted to get back into um, public service and, and government service. So in, in 2004, I had an opportunity to run for the state senate. That was my first election. Uh, and fortunately, I've been elected uh, ever since. Well, Senator, we're all seniors here and headed off to college next fall, and we wonder where we might be landing in four years where we're living, calling home. What efforts is the state making to develop more opportunities for young professionals here in the CNY area? That's a great question. You know, we have uh, had for the last several years in New York State, particularly in upstate New York, population has been leaving uh, the state and really all of the northeastern states have had this challenge. Um, so it's extremely important not only for government, uh, obviously work at the state government level, but to work closely with the private sector to create new job opportunities, new markets so that young people like all of you um, find economic uh, employment opportunities after wherever you go to, to school. You know, many, uh, we have great colleges and universities, and, and certainly uh, your interest in, in media might be interested in certainly the, the Newhouse School of Communications, right at Syracuse University, one of the best schools in the nation for that. But so often we see young people either stay here and get an education in New York State and then take that really good education and go somewhere else because uh, they can't find uh, employment here. Uh, sometimes we actually find uh, young people will go out of state to get an education and come back. So we want to create an, an, an economy, uh, whether you go in state or out of state to school, that we have those job uh, possibilities right over And that's one of the things that I work on all the time in my job as a state center. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next question here is going to be uh, some of the students here at CHS, we take a participation in government class where we learn about like, the various politics and stuff like that, at local level, national level. And uh, what we were wondering is if you could tell us a little bit about the Independent Democratic Conference, which we know you're a part of and we hear about a little bit in class, but hearing it from you I think would be kind of interesting. Yeah, that's uh, what really kind of started off in the New York State Senate about seven years ago as almost an experiment in government. So, you know, we have obviously in the state and the nation a, a two-party system, right, Democrats and Republicans. Um, but in the state Senate, uh, myself and a handful of other Democrats uh, got very uh, concerned and frustrated with how partisan our uh, state legislature had become, similar to what we see in Washington right now. And uh, we said, you know, there's got to be a better way. So at that time, it was only four of us, myself and three others. We've now grown to eight senators out of 63 senators. 
Um, uh, we are the Independent Democratic Conference, and we work with both sides of the aisle, with the regular mainline Democrats uh, and the Republicans as well. Uh, why do we do that? Because our basic philosophy is that, you know, there's certainly a time for, po for politics, but most of the time is for governing. And governing should be done in a collaborative process. Uh, we should always find compromise wherever uh, possible. And even though there, there, are, there are clear ideologies of the two parties, we need to work as hard as we can to find common ground wherever and whenever we can. Because we might be elected as Democrats or independent Democrats or Republicans or conservatives. Um, uh, but once we're elected, our job is to serve all of our constituents, regardless of political party. So the best way to do that, I found the best way to do that, is through this um, independent Democratic conference. Thank Great you. question. I couldn't agree more. Well, we've had some presentations here at school about the heroin epidemic. And what are some efforts that you personally, at a state level, are doing to combat that problem? The heroin opioid ep epidemic is, is, has really reached crisis level proportions, uh, and it's all across the state. It's in urban areas, it's in rural areas, it's in suburban areas, so it affects everyone. Uh, we have, I have been serving on a uh, Senate special task force on heroin and opioid abuse, so we've been able to take some steps over the last uh, few years in terms of additional resources for treatment. Uh, in terms of working closely with law enforcement, <coughs> increasing penalties. Uh, but there, there is always more that needs to be done. In fact, before joining you for your program here, talking with the administration and your uh, superintendent here, Chittenango, about some of the collaborative things that your school is doing with some of the other schools in Madison County, because it affects all of you. So the more that we can work together, um, state government certainly plays a key role. The federal government, the president himself has talked about this as a uh, crisis around the nation. Uh, so we all need to come t together, government and private sector, uh, to really uh, to really do a lot more than we have all day. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Velosky, uh, we're going to shift the topic a little bit here. I'm sure you're a big sports fan. Uh, do you like to share your March Madness predictions? March Madness already? <laughs> well, I think that Virginia looks pretty strong right now. I know they play Syracuse again this weekend for the second time this year. Villanova's got a good team this year. Uh, Purdue seems to be fairly strong. I don't know as much about them, but I'm a big fan of uh, big fan of March Madness. My favorite sport, however, I have to tell you, is baseball, and I'm a big right, Yankees fan. Right. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> there we go. Ready to go. Right. Giancarlo Stan and Aaron Judge ready. You think they're going to hit back to back, or is I think so. Aaron Boone going to put so a left hander in between? Ooh, I don't know. That, that's I a good question. The, there you go. I, don't know. I think I'd have the protection of the lineup. You have those Three, two guys four. back to back. What are you going to do? Know, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good luck. Yeah, that's right. So it'll be an exciting season. Well, one last thing. You've been a state senator for 14 years. Any chance we can break some news today about future plans, maybe a run for governor? <laughs> wow, that's a tough one. You know, the other senator from Syracuse just announced a couple of days ago that he's running for governor, Senator DeFrancisco. I think one senator running for governor is <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right. You. All right, and that about wraps up this special edition of the Clarinet News. We just uh, want to thank Senator Valesi for coming out today and spending some time with us. I know me, me and Zach and Jackson certainly had a lot of fun. I hope you did too as well, Senator. And uh, once again, this is the Baronet News bringing you an exclusive interview with the Senator of the 53rd District of New York, uh, Mr. David Valesky. And that's about it. Up and uh, until our next broadcast, this is the Baronet News signing off.